Hey guys, Abby here. Welcome back to another Outriders video. In today's video, I'm going to give you my tips and tricks for leveling a Technomancer through the Expedition Challenge tiers. Unfortunately, a lot of us are playing solo right now as we wait for the inventory wipe bug to be resolved, but luckily this gave me the opportunity to level a completely fresh Technomancer and experience the entire game as a solo player. So you've just finished the main story and you arrived at the Outriders camp prepared to do your first expedition. It's important to know that world tier progress and challenge tier progress are different. The only way to increase your challenge tier and unlock gear higher than item level 42, which is the highest gear obtainable in the main story world at world tier 15, you'll need to progress through expeditions and increase your challenge tier. Here's a handy chart I found on Reddit that illustrates the gear level associated with each challenge tier. As long as your world tier is progressed high enough, you'll be able to go back and farm for better gear to take on higher challenge tiers up to challenge tier 8. So keep that in mind if you get stuck and you need some better items to help you get through, you can always go back to your main story, farm up some gear, and then go back to doing expeditions. You can also farm monster hunts, bounty hunts, and historian missions in the main story area for lots of epic loot and a legendary reward for turning in all 10. Monster hunts will reward armor, bounty hunts will reward weapons, and historian missions are a mix of both. You will also receive a legendary weapon reward for world tiers 12 through 15, so keep that in mind as you progress up in the challenge tiers. It may be worth going back and getting these on level as you progress up through those challenge tiers. These are all great ways to gear up before you take on the higher tiers. Make sure you're making adjustments to your armor and your weapon mods as you swap out for higher gear. You always want to make sure you have those certain mods on that you are accustomed to, so don't just slap everything on willy-nilly. Make sure you're ready to go before you launch that expedition. Expedition rewards, including leveling up to the next tier, are determined by how quickly you complete them. At lower tiers, you'll only need to hit bronze in order to move up to the next tier. As you get into the higher ones, you'll need to hit silver to progress and then eventually gold. So try out some different expeditions and find the ones that you're most comfortable with and get to know those ones very well. For me, I like Chemplant, Archways of Enoch, Stargrave, and Boomtown. If your favorites aren't on the map to select currently, you can always launch one and abandon it to come back to the Outriders camp and choose again, or you can even travel to a different camp from Chana and then check the expedition table there. Another option is to just try different expeditions because even if you fail, you're still getting some gear on level from the pity chest. At least that's what I'm calling it. If you, if you retry the expedition, the chest is located somewhere in the starting area. And if you abandon it, it's going to be next to the crafting area at the Outriders camp. So make sure you check that chest and loot it because at higher tiers, you could find a legendary there. The first few challenge tiers shouldn't be too much of a struggle as a solo technomancer. All you need to do is choose the skills Blighted Rounds, Cold Snap, and Blighted Turret. Spec into the top skill tree. This is my skill tree that I went with. Of course, there's about two or three points you could move around here. And make sure you mod your armor to have both Spare Mag, which is a tier 1 Blighted Rounds mod, and either Trick Up the Sleeve, which is a tier 1 Blighted Rounds mod, or Toxic Lead, which is a tier 2 general mod. This is how you achieve unlimited blighted rounds. As long as you're killing stuff, it's going to refill your magazine and you should never run out of blighted rounds. And then due to the skill tree capstone empowering antenna, every time you throw out your toxic turret, you're going to get a 40% weapon damage buff for 10 seconds. And this is going to make it really easy to coast through a lot of the lower tiers without really looking at your gear besides replacing the mods whenever you swap out an armor piece for something higher level. Speaking of armor, when you're choosing your armor pieces, look for firepower as the first stat, the first attribute there in white, and then you're going to look for close range damage and long range damage. Now, if you can't find all three of those together, or if survivability is an issue for you, Skill Leech is also a really great attribute to look for as well. 
but the main priority is firepower as that first stat. Also check to see the attributes on your weapon as well. Weapon Leech is going to help you with survivability because you're constantly going to be shooting things, whereas Armor Pierce and Crit Damage are going to help you kill faster. This is the loadout and strategy that I used almost the entire way through the challenge years. For weapons, I use the tactical assault rifle because it's a mix of precision and spray and pray, which I need sometimes since I'm using a controller. And I've noticed that there's quite a big damage range for these weapons at each level. So always check your loot, even blues and the vendors for weapon upgrades. It's really important to try to get the higher end of the damage range when you're looking for which weapon to use. And right now, the only way to tell if your weapon is higher damage or lower for that level is to compare it to other weapons. So just make sure you're always comparing your weapon. This is especially important once you hit challenge tiers 7, 9, and 11 as these tiers bump up two gear levels instead of one. And even one increase to your weapons or your armor is going to make a huge difference to your performance. If you're not completing those tiers, the only other options for loot are the vendors or the pity chest. So make sure that you check Bailey and the three vendors at Trenchtown as they will have on-level gear to sell you. You can even purchase rare blue gear and then level it up to epic at the crafting station for the two mod slots or you can just wear it blue as it is. It should be better on level than an under leveled piece of gear. Speaking of mods, in addition to the two mods that you want to have on at all times for your blighted rounds to be unlimited, here are the others I would recommend. On your armor, you're going to want to look for emergency stance, dum-dum bullets, toxic lead, freezing boost, radical therapy, crit stack, or bloodlust. Damage absorber is also a really good defensive mod. And then for weapons, keep an eye out for Bone Shrapnel, Storm Whip, Anomaly Enhancement, Minefield, Killing Spree, which is a tier 3 mod, but you may have that legendary from the demo you could dismantle and grab. It comes on the Amber Vault. Icebreaker is a really great tier 2 weapon mod for Technomancer because you will be freezing things with your Cold Snap and maybe even with your Blighted Turret if you run the Freeze mod for your Blighted Turret. So that's going to help you do some AoE. The tier 2 mod Claymore is really great at lower challenge tier levels as well. I use this on an AR for a few of the challenge tiers. And of course there are a lot of other ones, so just pick and choose what looks good to you. Experiment with some different weapon mods. But I would say for the ultimate Technomancer build, you're always going to want to have Killing Spree on your weapon if you are running solo especially. So make sure if you do find an Amber Vault, dismantle it for the mod and you're good to go. If you get stuck at higher tiers, make sure your gear is leveled up and modded correctly, including your weapon. You're going to have to identify the problem. Do you need more damage or more defense? And then adjust your mods accordingly. If you feel like you're not doing enough damage, Try to farm for a new weapon or upgrade your current one if you have enough resources. Many times I felt defeated at certain levels only to find out my weapon was a low damage roll for that level. So always compare it to your other options and choose the higher damage AR unless the lower damage has a godly mod on it. And then if defense is an issue, add a defensive mod or use ice component which changes your blighted turret to freeze. This can help a lot with crowd control. When you reach challenge tier 11, if progress is difficult, you'll want to start increasing your attributes on both your armor and your weapon. You can do this at the crafting station using shards that you acquired through dismantling your other gear. If you replace this armor in the future, you can then dismantle it to receive most of the shards back. If you're still having trouble, you may need to run a group of 10 monster hunts or 10 bounty hunts to farm some tier 3 mods. Even though the armor and weapons will be lower level, you can dismantle them for the mods and this is going to help you progress. For the last two challenge tiers, 13 and 14, I went with silver on Kemplant and gold on Archways of Enoch. Despite the damn aggressive alphas that jump on you every two seconds, I feel like the timer is a little more lenient than the others, especially with the changes made to Kemplant and Boomtown. Overall, leveling my Technomancer up through the challenge years solo wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. There were definitely a few sticky tiers where I had to evaluate my gear and find a better weapon, but unlimited blighted rounds will get you through. <laughs> 
use it to farm up those legendaries, and then you can have fun with other builds. Hopefully we'll get a buff to anomaly power or something like that because honestly I've been a little underwhelmed with a lot of the other builds that are possible for Technomancer. There are a lot that are possible at challenge tier 14 and 15, but none that really compete with the damage of Blighted Rounds. I think a lot of the non-Blighted Rounds builds are going to be great for co-op because you can do a lot more debuffing for your friends, but until we get back into a safe place where we can co-op with our friends again without fear of our inventory being wiped, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out as it comes. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully this helped you guys. Hopefully it's not too long once I get done editing it and it gives you guys a better idea of what to do as you go up in those challenge tiers. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and have fun out there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.